In this video, you will learn how to save data to a Postgres database using both client and server components in Next.js. In our example today, we will build a reviews component for our e-commerce application. The component will load the existing reviews from a Postgres database hosted in Vercel and then also have a form for inputting new reviews that then will be saved to that same Postgres database. Without further ado, let's get started. So right here, I have a fresh Next.js project open. But before we do anything for this, let's actually first create our database and populate it with a couple of reviews. So what I'm going to do is open up Vercel and first create the database. So I'm going to go to the storage tab and over here we have Postgres, click create and then give a name for the database and then select the region and click create. Okay, now our database was created. So next let's add the reviews table and a couple of reviews in it. So I'm gonna go to the data tab over here and open up the query window and first create the reviews table. So it will have ID, name, text, and ref product, which will indicate the product that this review is related to. So I'm gonna run this query, okay. And then let's add a couple of reviews in the table. So we have one, two, three reviews. So let's run those. It said failed to execute, but let's check it out from the browse tab. So I'm gonna open up the reviews and it looks like they went in. I'm, I'm not sure why it said error, but the reviews are in the database. So that's all we care about. Okay, so last step regarding this database is to uh, hook it up with our Next.js application. And the way to do this is to open up the .env.local tab. And these all are environment variables that tell our application uh, where our database is and how to connect to it. So what I'm gonna do is click copy snippet over here and then switch back to the VS code. And inside of my project, the root directory, I'm gonna create a new file called .env.local. So this way we can add local environment variables for our application. And I'm gonna paste in what I just copied and click save and close this file. And then I will install the virtual Postgres NPM package, which we will use to interact with the database. So I'm gonna add that like this. Okay, so now we should be ready to go. So what I was thinking we could do is actually first see how to uh, write the reviews to the database using client components, and then how to do that same thing using server components. So let's start with the client components. I'm gonna open up the SRC folder and app folder and create a new file in it like this. So inside the with client components route, we will have the page. And let me paste in some code over here like this. So what we are doing here is importing a reviews component and then rendering a header and then the reviews component. And we don't yet have that reviews component. So let's create that too. So I'm gonna save this and create a new component inside the with client components folder called reviews like this. And now let me paste in some code over here and let's go through it together. Okay, so let's go through this. So we have the data and its loading indicator over here. So the data is the reviews. And then when the component is mounted, we are uh, fetching the existing reviews from slash API slash product slash ID slash reviews uh, route handler. And we will create the route handler in a second, but let's see this component through first together. Uh, then if we are loading, we are displaying a loading indicator. And then in the return statement, we are returning uh, a section with the reviews. So we are mapping through the reviews over here and rendering them. And for each review, we are rendering the name and the text. So now only thing left to do in order to see these reviews is to actually uh, create this API endpoint. So let's create the route handler for that. So I'm gonna create a new file in app directory like this. So I'm gonna place the route handler inside API slash product slash brackets ID slash reviews slash route like this. And then inside of this route handler, I'm gonna add the get function for getting the reviews like this. So we are getting the SQL from the version Postgres 
and then we are curing all the reviews for the given product and returning them as JSON over here. So this is pretty basic stuff for getting the data from the database. So let's save this and let's fire up our dev server and switch back to the browser to see if it works. All right, so I'm gonna go to the with client components route. Looks like we get the loading reviews indicator and then we get the three reviews displayed that we inputted in our database. So it looks like the database connection is working and we are able to read the reviews from the database. Okay, so now to the fun stuff. So what we want to do next is to add a form down here that will have a name field and text field for inputting a new review. And then we want to save that review to the database. So let's switch back to the VS code. And as with reading data with client components, uh, the same it goes with saving data. So we can directly access the database from the client component, but we need to use a route handler for interacting directly with the database. So what we want to do here is add the form over here and then make a, a post request to the route handler that will then, the route handler will then uh, handle the saving to the database. So let's add some code for our component. So I'm gonna start with the form. So let's add the uh, input form down here like this. So we have a heading and then we have a text input for name and then for the review and a button that will then uh, trigger the submit form. And as we can see, the onclick handler is submit form. So we haven't defined that yet. So let's do that next. So we can place it over here on top of the is loading. So let me just add that like this. So it's an onclick handler that will make the fetch request as post for our reviews endpoint. And then it will uh, get as a response the new reviews and set them to the data. And one thing we want to also add is if we check out our form, the name and the review text, they are controlled inputs. So we need to add the state for these inputs too. So let's add those to the top of the component. So over here like this. So now we can save the name and the text to the state over here. And one thing I'm gonna still add over here is check for the data. So if we have no reviews, we will display the no reviews text like this. So now I think we have everything in our component for the saving of the data. So the only thing left to do is to modify our route handler to handle the post request too. So I'm gonna open up the route handler and below the get function, I'm gonna create the post function like this. So we can get the post request uh, by defining a function called post and we can get the request parameters from it with this request.json function. And the parameters we had was the name and the review text. Then we can just simply input them to our database using the SQL variable. So it's plain SQL, insert into reviews, the name, text, and the product, and then the values like this. And once the review is inserted, we want to return the new reviews or, or all the reviews from this route handler and we can query them like this over here and then just return them as JSON. So now our route handler should be ready to go. So I'm gonna save it and switch back to the browser. Okay, so now we have the form over here. So let's test this out. So I'm gonna type in the name and then the review like this and let's click save. So looks like the review is saved. So it's displayed over here. And now if we refresh the page, we can still see the review over there. So it has been saved to the database. So now we are saving data from a client component to the Postgres database inside Vercel. So next, let's see how to do the same thing with uh, server components. So I'm gonna switch back to the VS Code. So I'm gonna close these two files and create a new folder to our app directory called with server components. And inside of that, I will create the page and add the following code like this. 
So again, we are just displaying a heading and then the reviews component. And let's now create the reviews component too. So I'm gonna create a new file to the same folder called reviews like this. And let me paste in some code over here and let's go through it together then like this. So again, the difference to the client component with this server, com server component is that this code is run on the server so we can directly interact with the database uh, compared to the client components where we needed to create the route handler in order to interact with the database. So right now we are just displaying the existing reviews over here and we are getting them from the database with this get reviews function and we can interact with the database directly in our component since this code is run on the server. So let's save this and uh, switch to the browser and see if this works. So I'm going to open up the with server components uh, route and looks like we are getting the existing reviews over here. So that's great. So the reading part is working. So now let's see how to add the form and the uh, review saving to the server component. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the form down here like this. So it looks pretty much the same as with client components, but with a couple of differences. So first of all, our inputs are no longer controlled. As you can see, they don't have uh, on-change handlers or values. And then we don't have on-click handler for this uh, save button, uh, but rather the way we save this form is by having this button as type of submit and then passing in a submit form function as action parameter for this form. So this is what our form now looks like in the server component. So next let's define this submit form because that's where the interesting stuff is happening. So I'm going to define it up here. Let's add it over here and let me type it in and then let's go through it together. All right. So what the submit form is, is an asynchronous function. And as you can see on the first line, we are saying use server. So what this function actually is, is a server action. And what this means is that we can trigger this function by clicking this uh, save button down here because it submits the form and we added the submit form as action parameter for the form. And this code will then be run after the button is pressed and it will be run on the server. So on the first look, it might seem that this is run on the client, but in fact, it is run on the server. And thanks to that, we can again, directly interact with the database in our function over here. So we can make an insert SQL statement directly to our database with our form data. And then on the last line of this function, we are calling uh, revalidate path. And we actually need to import this still. So let me do that like this. So we are importing it from next cache. And what this does is it tells Next.js that Hey, this path, so our current path with server components, uh, the data for this is changed. So please fetch the data again. And what this line here does is it makes it possible for us to submit the form and then for this data to be fetched again after the uh, saving of the new review. So let's just basically save this and let's test it out to see how it actually works. So I'm in my with server components URL. So now when I type in a new review like this, and now when we click save, you can see that the list is refreshed and the new review is displayed down there. So looks like everything is working. Even if we refresh the page, the reviews stay. So they are in the database. And of course we can check it out also by going to Vercel and in our storage, go to the reviews table and let's refresh this. So right here, we can see all our reviews also, just to make sure that they are in the database. So with server actions, we can actually interact with the database based on the user input with server components. And this is just a simple example what you can do with server actions. 
and there is much more to learn about and I'm currently making more Next.js content and the best way to stay up to date on the content is to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below and sign up for my newsletter. You can do that by clicking the link below in the description if that's something you're interested in.